And that's the next thing we need to configure, the WAN side, the wide area networking side. So let's go to internet now. And it is actually already configured. We have the IP address and subnet mask and default gateway and primary and secondary DNS that we're using from our ISP. It came to us automatically via dynamic IP, via DHCP. And really what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reconfigure this statically. Now you don't know what would happen. It just so happens that I was given the correct information uh, and given the next IP I have five static IPs that I purchase every month. So it just happened to give the next one and all the other information is the same. So you never know. So you want to go through the motions and you know, if you're using a static IP, you want to select static IP. And here's an older static IP I, was, I had on this system just for some testing I was doing. And so we're going to back that out and put in the new static IP. And I have a block right now. It's 216.164.222. And I have .202 through 206. And currently my main network's on 202. And for this network, I'll use 203 uh, because a couple others are being used. I'm using 205 and 206 right now. So we'll tab down to the next field. And so this is a public IP address. This is not a private IP. This is public. This is something that's viewable. You would be able to see this if you were to connect to it. But when I'm done recording these videos, I'm going to get a whole new block of static IPs. So it doesn't really make a difference to me whether you can see this or not right now. I want you to see the real thing in action. But this is the WAN address or the internet address, otherwise known as the external address. And this is something that could be connected to from other systems on the internet. So we'll change the subnet mask. And the default subnet mask that we're using with the ISP is 255.255.255.248. This is a subnetted IP scheme. The default gateway is 216.164.222, and you can see the numbers in there, 201. And then we have primary DNS, which is 207.172.3.8, and that's the server that takes care of the resolution from name to IP address whenever you connect to a website or other domain name associated service. And the secondary DNS is the same, just the last octet is one higher. And so we want to double check all this, 216.164.222.203. Subnet mask, 2255.248. Our IP network is defined by the subnet mask. Triple 255 tells us that the first three octets are the network portion. So it stands to reason that the default gateway will be on that same network, 216.164.222, and the default gateway is 201. That's assigned specifically to me for my static IPs. And uh, once again, uh, review the DNS, 207.172.3.8 and 3.9. We're going to leave the MTU the same. This is the default 1500 bytes per packet. Changing this can do interesting things and it could increase performance or it could make certain applications work better and certain applications work worse. We're going to leave that as the default. That's uh, something to talk about on another day, but we have all our information. We're going to save that. And so now we want to check the connection. We're going to check the internet connection and we can do that in a variety of ways. You could do it directly within the router. And what we do is go down to system tools, diagnostics. And you can do a ping or a trace route. And you could do it by IP address or domain name. So we could do example.com and do a start. Give it a moment. And it pings example.com and you can see the IP there, 93.184.216.34. We get replies, so we're good. It works just like it would in the command prompt or in the uh, PowerShell. And we could do the same type of thing right here if we wanted to from our local computer to make sure that the, that the local computer can get in as well. And you see the same information. So that's good. We're good to go. At this point, we are set up with our IP scheme on the LAN side and on the WAN side. And everything looks good here. No reboot is necessary at this point, but sometimes you may want to reboot just to uh, make sure it still works once your configuration is done. But we have more configurations to do in the following sub-lessons, so we'll wait on that for a little bit. 
Now, one other thing I wanted to show real quick, I have multiple network adapters on this computer, my main system that I'm working from, my AV editor. And when we did an IP config slash all, we showed those. We showed the main network and we showed it as 192.168.41.202. So that's 41 there. And then we have the DPro42 separate network adapter altogether. And that we're using 10.252.0.254. That was statically assigned. And so here, DHCP enabled? No. So we have both of these network cards. Now, sometimes when you have two network cards in a system, when you have a multi-homed system, you could have some issues with routing and which network to select. Because at this point, I have two wireless routers that I could go through. And one way to take a look at this information is to do a netstat dash RN. And when we do that, we get a lot of information. It shows all the network adapters by name and by MAC address. Then it shows the routing table. And it shows the destination. All zeros means just out, out through the uh, router. The gateway address 41.1 from a, the local computer. And the interface 41.202, that's for my main network connection. So the gateway is the router. The interface is the network adapter. And then we have the other network here and the gateway of the other router, the one that we're working with in this course, 10.252.0.101. And we have 254 is the local interface we're using. Now, sometimes one route may be given a higher precedence, a higher priority, and that's assigned by a variety of factors, which collectively create a number called a metric. The lower the metric, you could say faster the connection, or I should say the lower the metric, the higher the level of precedence. So the lower the metric number, the higher this guy will be on the active routes or persistent routes. And you might actually have to add a persistent route when you're using a multi-homed system so that you can get to the networks that you want to by default. Uh, so prioritization is important here. And there's a lot of interesting stuff with this, but you might need to do uh, what's known as a route add. And if you need it to be persistent, meaning something that will be applied when the computer first starts, you would, dash, you would add the dash P parameter. But this is the way I want it right now. I want my 192.168.41, my main network, First, and you can see I've actually added a persistent route with a metric of two, a very low number, so a very high priority. But we also have the, uh, the other connection, and that's just a default persistent route. Well, Windows 10, I'm using Windows 10, and what it does is it tries to find the best route based on the metric. And if you have a wired and a wireless connection, it'll go with the wired first. If you have multiple wireless or multiple wired, it'll look at the metrics. In this case, my metric is the same on both of these uh, because they're both wired connections and they're both statically assigned and both connecting to uh, typical Soho routers, which are very similar. So I had to actually add that persistent route for this network to keep it as the, uh, the higher priority and give it a low metric number. So that's a little bit about that. And we'll talk more about that as we move on. But that's pretty much it. We've uh, configured the LAN side with our new IP scheme. We've configured the WAN side. And if you go to your status section on this device, you see all that information. The internet, which is the WAN side, the LAN side, the local area network, and then your wireless networks, which will change in the following sub-lesson. And we did our diagnostics, we did our ping and checked everything. You want to make sure that you do that, make sure everything works properly. Always test whenever you do any type of network configuration. So that's it for this sub-lesson.